I want to thank Research Consultants International for sponsoring today's podcast. They're a globally renowned lead generation firm that helps economic development organizations create real prospects. They've helped over 500 economic development organizations. Let me tell you exactly what they do. They facilitate one-on-one meetings for economic developers with corporate executives who will have projects soon. They can facilitate these meetings to where you travel to the corporate executive's office and meet them there, or you meet them at a trade show, or even have a conference call so you don't have to pay for travel. They recently launched a service called FDI 365, which provides you a lead a day of fast-growing companies that will be expanding soon. Their research has helped over $5 billion in projects get cited since inception. I encourage you to go to www.researchfdi.com to learn more about research consultants. As far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely the best lead generation firm in the business for economic development organizations. Call them now. They can help you create real prospects. Welcome to this week's episode of the Next Move Group We Are Jobs podcast. I'm Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group, and today we've got Nicole Sedlachik with us. I hope I said that right. Did I say it right? You said it perfectly, All right, Chad. I've, I've got my New Orleans accent out, <laughs> and uh, it's 7.30 in the morning at a conference, and Nicole's got me out. We had scotch last night, so <laughs> if I said it right, I'm, I'm proud of myself. You're doing good. So, Nicole is Economic Development Consultant with Nebraska Public Power District, and she's also the current chair of the Mid-America EDC Conference where we're speaking this morning. So thank you for the invitation and we're glad to have you on our show. Yeah, well, thank you for the invite to your show and thank you for joining us at this year's Competitiveness Conference. Awesome. Uh, You sat on our site selector panel and provided some great information to our attendees and some great information uh, in your roundtable session and you are you still have a presentation to go today so. that's right I, I think I can get through it's already built so all I got to do is <laughs> half a life show it up huh so uh, why don't you tell these folks about Nebraska public power do you cover the whole state you know what y'all do and kind of what your role is yeah well we help serve to more than 600,000 Nebraskans either at the retail or wholesale with wholesale electric power and energy related services We generate and then we deliver that to either 46 municipalities, 25 public power districts or cooperatives, and we also serve 80 Nebraska communities at at the retail level. So we serve a a big part of Nebraska, it's not the entire part, Mm -hmm. but it's all or parts of 86 of our 93 Nebraska counties, so it's a big chunk. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and Nebraska's been good. we got to put a project in Nebraska. Y'all have been too good to me. College World Series, and Gary Clark's a friend of mine. So y'all have been good to me. we got to find a project for up there. We've had some food processors look. We just haven't been able to get them over the... You've brought some projects to us, and we just got to get them over the... That's right. That's right. we got to get them over the line. So talk about kind of what y'all might do different there as far as... So do you actually help recruit for the power company, or do you just handle you know rate negotiations or I find power companies across the country handle it different since you represent multiple one you know kind of what's your what's your role with actually helping with the economic development project when they get one. NPPD is is unique in a sense that we have a totally dedicated economic development department and so we have a, a team of about 10 of us divided into consultants who are kind of the boots on the ground helping with recruitment, expansion opportunities, and community strategic planning and business retention and expansion work. And then we have a research team that really helps communities with the data, workforce. We do a number of different things to help communities with economic development. So we're, we're really their partner in economic development. We want them to come to us and their other partners when they have needs. Um, we're also out kind of searching for leads for recruitment mm-hmm. projects and we help communities, those RFIs, those RFPs that come right, into the communities. So dreaded, yeah. Yes, yeah. So <laughs> when they come into the state or to the community directly, we can help them, you know, put together their information mm-hmm. with the help of our research team and consultants with data, a number of different things that we do to, to help grow our right. communities. We, we're a lot more than just keeping the lights on in the community. We right. want to see our communities be growing, healthy, sustainable yeah. communities. And I tell you, that whole Omaha to Lincoln area is very impressive because I've been two years in a row now because my team's Mississippi State. We've made yeah. the College World Series. And, it is very, I, I don't know if I just expected it to be, uh, of course, you know, Warren Buffett and, you know, Berkshire had, I don't know if I expected it to be more ag, 
like there's certainly a lot to add, but I mean it is very it's a very nice place. If, yeah, for people yeah. that hadn't been there, it's kind of a very hidden gem, you know. Yeah, so I am a born Nebraskan, have lived there my entire life, so I'm very proud of the state from west to east, north to south. It's a it's a beautiful state if you haven't got past Lincoln and, right. and traveled and I had more. Until lately, yeah. <laughs> we need to get you there yeah. because we have some really beautiful places, some rich history, and just some really great tourist attractions in yeah. the state. We're doing executive search right now, Cheyenne, Wyoming, which kind of touches far west yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. So I've gotten to learn about some of those towns and looking for candidates. Yes. It was, so I'm, I'm learning it on a map and Google Earth and all, even if, I'm, even yeah. if I hadn't been there. So, <laughs> so I like to ask people how they got into this profession. Hardly anybody grew up as a kid, with, you know, you want to be a truck driver or like a nurse or pharmacist. Or Very few people want to be an economic developer so what's your story yeah well I always thought I would be editor of my newspaper that I graduated from high school the community I graduated from high school at but it's kind of interesting because when I look back the community that I went to high school in got me involved in and what I look back and say well that was totally economic development at the time and so I was invited as a high school student to sit on a committee to help pass a sales tax to keep a swimming pool in a community is that right <laughs> <laughs> I was invited to be a part of our of a community foundation organization that was working to be a place for donations to come in and, and grants to be awarded into the community. So, you know, looking back, I, oh, and then also in my high school years, I had the opportunity to attend a ribbon breaking at Nebraska's first two turbine wind farm <laughs> in north central <laughs> so, so Nebraska. You were meant to be an economic developer, whether you <laughs> so, knew it or not. But, yeah, so it's kind of interesting that I, I started off thinking I wanted to be kind of in that news reporting. Mm -hmm area but then as I was covering events uh, for our local radio station being involved in economic development that way I was like oh this is this is a really fun profession right. I enjoy getting to meet the people working with communities on strategic planning and, and helping them kind of discover who what kind of community they want to be and helping them discover mm -hmm. that helping businesses solve problems that they have whether it's a workforce problem or it's a regulation challenge or helping introduce them to the right partner that can help them. I just right. I found this true love and, and passion for, for economic development. My, my high school English government teacher, Mr. Jim Hyatt, and his <laughs> wife, are, are, I think I can credit them to kind of introducing me to the world of economic development. Yeah. Well, that's a better story than most people have. <laughs> I mean, you got more strategy than, than most people. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I just became one. So, But I will brag on Nebraska, and I will also, I know, they do really good jobs up there with community foundations, and and a lot of them now are recruiting like young professionals where that they'll actually participate in, in uh, helping them finance land for housing and all. And I just, of all my travels across the U.S., the, the, the strongest place that I really see using community foundations to do everything from building hospitals to hotels to helping, you know, housing for young professionals. I really think Nebraska, Iowa, that area does the best that I see. So I don't know if, if you got it. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. I don't know what the history of that is or why it's so strong. I mean, even small towns. We had Manning, Iowa on our show. And what they have done with their, I think they call it the Betterment Foundation. It's just incredible. So talk about, if you can, the history of all of that. Yeah, so I agree with you 100%. Nebraska is very fortunate that we have a, an organization called the Nebraska Community Foundation that kind of really serves as, as an umbrella for communities like O'Neill that I, I live in to be a, a part of their network. And, and this this network actually just celebrated 25 years of being oh. in existence. And so when you look across Nebraska communities and communities that are affiliated with the Nebraska Community Foundation, you can see that network, the dollars that have been raised, and it's so much so much more than the dollars right, raised, right. but you can see that it, it's helped, in my community alone, the Community Foundation Fund has helped bring an expanded uh, community college presence to wow. the community. So helping train future workforce and, and helping that mom kind of take that next step to better her family situation mm -hmm. and, and earn more money in her family. And to me, I mean, that is real economic development there. And Y'all probably don't want to give all your secrets away, but if, if, if folks are out there thinking about starting a community foundation, you ought to study what Nebraska and some of those places are doing because I, I just think y'all got it down pat based on what I've seen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. Like I said, the Nebraska Community Foundation, which is one of our great partners in economic development in the state of Nebraska, I'm celebrating 25 years of this, mm -hmm. this network 
that they've they've helped communities really kind of uh, grow and, and yeah. invest in themselves yeah. and, and really kind of, you know, we can't wait for the, the federal government to, you know, help right. our communities. It's, it's the people that live and work there, that raise their family there, that have the vested mm-hmm. interest and want to see the, what's best for that community. Well, no, you're going to have to slip off soon. You've got actual work you've got to do. But real quick, tell us about this organization. It's my first time to the Mid-America EDC event, and I've been uh, very pleased with it so far. So are you chair of the conference or chair of the organization? I can't remember. I am chair of the conference. Okay, chair of the yes. conference. So, so just tell folks uh, in, in our territories who may be listening a little bit about this organization in case they in case they want to come to your next conference. Yeah, so Mid-America Economic Development Council is a regional organization, so made up of a number of, of states here in the, the Midwest. And we have a couple conferences each year. Uh, right now it's the Competitiveness Conference, and that one has always been in, in Chicago in December, and so we bring in site consultants. It's, it's called the Competitiveness Conference uh, because we bring in site consultants. We uh, learn, you know, kind of how to put our best foot forward and trying to attract projects into our communities. And then every spring, summer, there's a best practices conference that, that moves around within our, our geographic area. But this organization is, is a great networking organization to learn from, from your peers in, mm-hmm. in surrounding states. Uh, we have a very strong, you know, presence with our Mid-America EDC, just a, a great organization to learn from each other, professional development. We have a number of webinars throughout the year, um, some great access that you can have to data in your communities. Um, so it's I encourage you, if, you're, if you haven't attended one of our conferences, whether it's the competitiveness or the best practices, uh, I encourage you to, to do so and, and think about becoming a, a member of the organization. Yeah, yeah. and I, uh, there's a good group of folks here, and the weather's not too bad for Chicago in December, so I was a little worried when I when I said I'm going to Chicago in December, <laughs> but, but it's worked out just fine. So, Nicole, thank you for being with us today. We really appreciate it, and I appreciate the invitation to the conference. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, Chad. Thank you.